Chris Eubank Jr., the latest addition. Um, obviously, a lot of history in the, yeah. the Hearn and Eubank family. Yeah. It must be exciting to, to the son, Barry's son and Chris's son. It is. Um, I kind of feel like I, I've been at two press conferences now where I'm a little bit on edge this week. One was Tyson Fury and one was this one because I spent my years, probably, I don't know, from 11 to 18 at all his fights and around him all the time. And you know, I still remember as a kid going into his dressing room in Brighton and him telling me to pick one of his leather jackets to have. You know, and, and so you know, I think I'm going to be working very, very hard for him because you know, it, he's, um, he's got a great team around him now. You know, Adam Booth, R Ronnie Davis is a great man as well. You know, spent a lot of time with him. Chris English, um, he knows the game. He's been around a long time and he believes in his son, no doubt about that. But Adam Booth is, is also, you know, been around the sport. Adam Booth's been telling me for years about Chris Eubank Jr. So I feel as though we've come in at a time where he's ready to go. You know, box on October the 24th, box on December the 12th. And then from there, you know, I believe he's ready to go and challenge for, for major honours, world titles. You know, they talk about moving up to super middleweight to 168 pounds. What a division to be in, domestically, internationally. And, and, you know, he's almost ready to go. I mean, look, we're four weeks away from Sheffield. Already the opponents they're talking about are well beyond the level I expected them to be talking about. So they're ready, you know, and, and they want the big fight. Um, Chris has been a, a kind of free agent technically for a while now, you know, when he left McHennessy. Why, why now? Why not sooner? Why do you think it now is the right time to bring him on board? Um, it's like... When he turned professional, I think everyone just assumed that he'd be a matron fighter. And it's quite strange because, you know, Chris's or English's um, relationship has been with my father. So probably when he looks at me, he sees the little boy that used to run around chasing after him in Brighton. So I think over the last three or four years, they've seen what I've done in boxing, and, and that's probably made him realise this is the place to be. Of course, he knows about the benefits of boxing on Sky Sports. He's boxed on that platform. And everybody wants to become a pay-per-view fighter in time. And, and he has all the ingredients to do so. But nowhere near there yet. But we've got to try and get there. And um, I think he has the ability, the story, the personality to make that happen. He's saying that he wants all of the middleweight belts w within the next two years. Um, as a promoter, is that a, well, some challenge? It is, but not really when the team's willing to take those challenges. You know, I mean, you know, there's fights out there. You know, Golovkin, for one, he, he fight anybody, anyone who's willing to step up. So these are monster fights. But by the way, the fights they believe they can win. So whilst they believe they can win, they're in a great position to, to go and challenge in those fights. So, um, you know, I, th I think the world is his oyster. It really is. Let me ask as well. All sorts of rumours on Twitter about John Ryder as the opponent for October 24th. No rubbish. Twitter rumour. John Ryder's actually boxing on October the 10th in a six-rounder at York Hall. So, no, definitely not. The list of opponents, um, when will we find out who, who the one will be? we'll get an announcement on that on Monday. But they're all, you know, they're world-ranked guys that we're looking at. I mean, and that's something that surprised me, you know. So I think that, you know, that they want those. I think he's going to look better. You know, the win against Chudinov was a really good win. And, and that showed him, that showed the improvements that he'd made since the Saunders fight. So I think, really... You know, he's, he wants to fight the better guys. He really wanted that Saunders rematch to, to prove having you know what happened in the fight with the the slow start or the you know the, the slow end from Saunders. Wherever you look at it, does does him signing with you make that kind of unlikely now because of the TV I networks think, and whatever? I could pay Saunders a lot more money for that fight than than probably was discussed before. But he's fighting Andy Lee. It's not it's not a fight that you know. I don't think that's as big as the likes of De Gale, Groves, Murray, you know, Super Middle, I think they're bigger fights. So, but I'm sure he'd love to avenge that loss and uh, see what happens in the Andy Lee fight. Spike O'Sullivan one has been one that's been floating around an uh, interesting fight and you know, could, be, uh, could be quite good money in it for both of them. Is that one that's on the radar at the moment? Yeah, I haven't really sat down, spoken to Adam and, and the team about opponents. <laughs> That, that much, you know, we're talking about a few names for October 24th, but Spike O'Sullivan, I see no reason why he shouldn't be in the mix. Um, but, you know, he's certainly got his eyes on some big fish. What's the plan with the belt? He holds the interim WBA belt. Um, are you looking to defend that or 
Could you drop it? How, how do you it see depends. it going? I mean, it's a nice belt to have, you know, and uh, being an interim world champion is, is very useful. I think I'd like him to defend that on October the 24th and, uh, you know, look to push for the, the real thing in the next sort of six to 12 months.